All right, everybody, welcome back. So I'm considering this on being a new segment, maybe the mush report. I don't know if you guys got any good ideas, just hit the comments below. But either way, I like to do some new videos of the medicinal mushrooms I'll be growing. And like I said from the last video, if you made it that far, that I would be explaining what I did up until this point. So basically just a rundown. These are Ben's original whole grain brown rice bags. These are the only types you want to use. Brown rice being, you don't have to have Ben's. You could use other options. So basically what you want to do is get yourself some way to inoculate this. And this is pretty much the cheap, easy way for most people to get started like myself. So this will be my second time around doing this. So basically I ordered a medicinal multi-spore syringe and whatever your medicinal choice is, uh, you can look for that and I'm sure they'll have it. But anyways, what I did is you wanna get your syringe and you wanna sterilize it and use a flame. So if this is my syringe, I stuck it in the bag. I inoculated like one cc, stuck it in another spot, one cc. Now every when I took it out, I flame sterilized the tip and had put it back in. So over the two holes on the last bags, I put the uh, micropore tape. But these bags, I just did one shot in there. Okay. And last time, all I did was a couple holes here and put micropore tape over for gas exchange because it's going to create CO2 and it needs to vent. And this time around, I did the uh, cut off the corner option and you secure the tape here, but don't pinch it. You want to create like this little like uh, pocket where air exchange can occur with the CO2. So these ones didn't puff up like the last bags. The last bags didn't have big enough air exchange holes and they were puffing up and I was trying to squeeze them. Had a lot of problems. Uh, I inoculated two bags last time. One was very contaminated when I opened it. So here I got four. As you can see, this one is very white. I'm ashamed of myself. They should have, I should have opened these a long time ago. So I don't know what to expect. You know, I had the two tents going, everything growing. But here, I'm just going to, I sterilize these. I'm just going to give it a cut open. I want to be careful. Because last time, I had trichoderma spores everywhere. And it wasn't a good situation. So, cut this open carefully. Give a little peek in here. Now, I'm not seeing any green but also this time around I didn't squeeze the cake and mush it around in there to get it spreading to get the mycelium spread so that's one difference this time I think last time from squeezing it and manhandling it too much I may have introduced some type of contamination but this one I'm not seeing anything in here but mind you, I'm still new at this. So there's quite a bit of rice here. But what I'm going to do is I'll dump this one out in a second. But what I really want is to put two in each one of these. And this right here is the CVG. I just made a pit. So when I break up the uh, spawn, I'll put it in here and I'll mix it all up but we'll open another bag and we'll see what happens. So there's no editing on this, so you'll see it firsthand. So. Yeah, I didn't do a break and shake, so you never know. Holy shit. Look at this bastard. Oh my lord. This is something else right here, boy. This whole thing is freaking ready to go. I see some metabolites in there, the yellowness. Oh, wow. 
All right, so we'll get this one in the tub first and show you how we break it up. All right, so another indicator that it's not contaminated, at least so far, is it has a very strong earthy smell. It smells just like the forest floor, like fresh mushrooms. And this right here is going strong. So this should be a very good outcome. So I may just, oh yeah, it's real hard. So we'll try and get this out of the bag. I don't know if that's contamination on the bottom or not, but I kick myself in the ass because I, I inoculated these at the end of January. So not a good thing. I hope it's just bruising. Uh, whatever it is. That's a... That's a freaking cake. Holy shit. Alright, so... Some people do this with their bare hands, but I really don't have the confidence of doing that. I really don't want anything contaminated. So basically, you just want to break this up. Oh, wow, yeah, this is fucking amazing so very very tough it's like freaking leather so i'm gonna get this broken up and we'll dump out the other bag see how that looks all right as you can see i got it very well broken up for the most part it's pretty tough i shouldn't have let it go that long but either way, if you do cut open your bag and you do it like this and you get a smell that doesn't smell like earth, doesn't smell like mushrooms, then it's bad. Uh, when I cut open the contaminated bag, it smelled sweet like it was uh, fermenting, it smelled like wine. It wasn't good. So you don't want any weird smells. So this one's got a pretty decent smell. So, I dump out some rice. Let's get this cake out of here from the first bag we open. See what it looks like. Oh boy. Oh, she's pretty white too. Not all the rice was eaten and metabolized, but either way, we got some good spawn going. And we just break this all up, just like I did the first one, and we'll mix it all in with the substrate. Now, when you use a substrate like this, you want to aim for a good field capacity, and field capacity is pretty much like how much water content is in your substrate, and you don't want it really wet. So the idea is to pick it up, squeeze a handful of it, and see how much water drips out. I had a few drips, but if it's a steady stream like that, it's too much water. So you're gonna either have to kind of get that water out of there somehow or add more cocoa or whatever it is you're using. So we're gonna break this all up. This, this, this shoe box, I have a feeling if everything goes well, it's gonna be freaking crazy. It's gonna be insanity. The other one was pretty slow. I had it sitting and fruiting for quite a while. But, you know, what we'll do is we'll get this all mixed up. We'll put the cover back on. And let it all start respawning inside all the substrate. So essentially, we're just going to make it do what it did already in the rice, but in a larger container. So then it's just even bigger. And then when we fruit it, it'll just be so much. But anyways, what I'm going to do is make sure this is broken up good. So now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to mix it in with my substrate. It's going to be easy. We want to get it thoroughly mixed. I'm glad I have that big heat net from Mars Hydro over there because uh, 
I got to warm up the uh, substrate nice. It's in the 70s, low 70s, so it won't be all cold and and it'll help the mycelium grow better. Just like your plants, your roots, everything gets cold, it's slow growth. But as you can see, I didn't really measure out this substrate too well. This is exactly what I had left. I have another bin and I put aside a separate container so I can do a case layer. So a case layer is a finishing layer over the top of everything when it's mixed, kind of like the uh, forest floor and everything will be below the casing layer. It also acts as protection to the uh, spawn as well and to help hold in moisture. So I'm gonna get this all mixed up We'll get it all packed down and we'll put the casing layer on. All right, so I got all that spawn mixed in the substrate. I've got it packed down really well in all the corners. Now, last time I did this, I used a, a liner. You can use a plastic, little plastic trash bag or what have you. And what you normally do is you would lay it inside the bin and then trim it out. So it's like a nice little uh, layer of plastic in there. And then you put all your substrate with your spawn in there. So what that does is it helps uh, reduce the risk of uh, side pinning coming out of the sides. Some people, sometimes you get air pockets or if it's not packed well, and they'll, the mushrooms will grow up out of the sides. So to prevent that, you basically put a blocker in there, which is a liner. So here I packed this down really well. It's very spongy. It's very tight and now I'm gonna add a casing layer now you can add a casing layer of like a quarter inch or so I guess it's preference but basically this is the same stuff the same substrate it's the coco core vermiculite and gypsum and the gypsum acts as uh, food of course, the vermiculite is going to help retain some moisture, and the cocoa makes up the majority of the substrate. So I'm just sprinkling this down, and I'm going to make sure I don't have any spawn showing any of the the rice that was all white and fluffy. So we basically do this. You can look through the sides of the bin to see how thick the casing layer is. But I'll get this all on here, set up, and show you what we do next. All right, now I got the casing layer on here. I have no visible spawn showing. I'm going to give this a nice mist before I put the cover on. What you want to do is, what's very helpful is you get one of these little fine mist pump sprayers. This is exactly what you need. Now, everything I'm doing here, I've learned from 90 Second Mycology YouTube channel and Philly the Golden Teacher. Now, if you really want more in-depth walkthroughs and explanations, you should check out their channel. So. I'm just learning and I did harvest my first go around but here I'm just trying to double it up I've got my lid some moisture on my lid and put it on that's it I'm going to do the same thing with the next tub. Actually, I'll open those bags on camera for you just to see what we're working with. But essentially, this is it. Mini shoebox tub. All misted, moist, ready to go. I'm going to have that inside the tent on top of that little heating pad so we can keep it nice and warm. All right. Let's do this again with the rest of the bags because I'm sure you may be as curious as I am. I don't know, I'm seeing some green on the bottom of this bed, boy, but 
It could be bruising. Not sure. So let's just be careful. All right, let's see what we got. Holy shit. We got, we got a mushroom growing already. Yeah, they've been in here way too long. So essentially, you could actually just cut an X in the bag or cut the top and they'll grow right out. Because once they get to this fresh air, they'll start fruiting conditions and they'll start coming up. And all those water droplets in there are perfect. That's another reason why it's probably pending. So anyways, let's get this out of the bag. Make sure it doesn't stink. It's one big chunk. This is a good sign. But there was some color on the bottom I want to look at. Alright, so that right there is no good. That was a mushroom that was growing. And right here, so been in there a little long it's got a little bit of a stink to it so i'm gonna put that one aside and not deal with it and i'll put some new gloves on all right so a reason for this other bag getting some contamination i isolated it in this bag but you know i'm sure you could pick it off but i really don't want to mess with it it's it was in the bag too long i really screwed myself here so what you can do with this is you can go bury it outside somewhere. You can go put it in a garden somewhere you know where it is and keep an eye out because, you know, there's no reason why this can't sprout outside. People do it. So don't throw it in the garbage. So this one, probably white on the bottom too. Be careful cutting this open. Uh, the first time I cut, cut open a highly contaminated bag, it, there was lots of spores. wasn't good. So, just want to be gentle. This one, uh, I can see a mushroom started going in there too. So, it's all nice and white and fluffy. It's very, very healthy signs. So, get this sucker out of the bag. We'll see what we're working with. Hopefully it isn't a bust. Look at that. So I got new gloves on, keeping it clean. There was a mushroom growing. Looked bruised. I'll pop her off. Now this one's got a stink on it too. You know what? Let me just stick it in there. All right, so I got the one stinky bag, which is most likely contamination when it smells something other than a nice clean foresty smell this is one bag with slight contamination in this tub these are unmodified tubs meaning I don't have any holes drilled anywhere for fresh air exchange for fruiting and this here is the same B plus multi spore syringe spawn to bulk 314.22 two Uncle Ben bags in here so this is the first time doing two Uncle Ben bags. I did a case layer on both of these. Stinky Box got a case layer. I misted them down. The moisture in there. You already see there's some nice moisture on the lids. I'm going to let these go for like a week or so. And just periodically check them. Just looking through the tops. Now, you put these covers on and you do not open them. Once you open them, it's putting them into fruiting conditions so keep them on let them stay warm humid moist in there and you want the tops 
you want the top to look like all white like it was inside the Uncle Ben bag so we'll come back do an update on what it looks like in a week all right all right y'all thanks for watching this dirty old how-to with spawn to bulk 90 second mycology UB tech peace